is a faithful God. He has given us victory. He goes to the battle front alone and gives us the victory. That's the God we serve. He's a faithful God. Even if we don't see, we don't hear. He is a God that is there in the battle. He is with you. He said that I will never leave you. I will not forsake you. He is mighty to do what he says. He is equal to the task. Fact and more than equal. He fails not. He is more than equal.
As if the pantry is full, because you know he knows. You know, the problem is that we come to God as if he does not know us. Matthew 6 32. You will see, don't know what he's done to us. I want you to follow this. We come to God as if he doesn't know. Let's read this together. One, two, three, let's go. You know, I need, by the grace of God, to counter the church into kingdom worship. Religious worship is limited only to what you can get. Kingdom worship operates on the understanding that He knows. He knows. So if I can focus on him the way he wants me to focus on him, if I can carry his kingdom the way he wants me to carry it, he's got me out. But you see, because of where we are coming from and the foundation we have, even in worship, even in the presence of God, there is so much a demand of what we want. The man who's talking here is not that I do not have needs. It's not that there are not things that I want God to meet. I have got a lot of things. Hear me. But my focus is on the kingdom. Or someone didn't hear me. I said, my, you see, if I had said receive, you would have said amen. I said, my focus is on the kingdom. I said, my focus is on the kingdom. Your father knows you want somebody. Tell somebody your father. 
Isaka. Tell somebody, give me verse 33, the next verse. Tell somebody, but seek first. Tell somebody, but seek first. Tell somebody, but seek first. The seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Then what will happen? Talk to me. Then what will happen? Listen, the of God. This church, you talk about the people who will lead industry, they are going to be born in this church. We are going to raise even a man that we are going to put on the seat. You talk about people who are going to bring value in an uncommon way. They will come from this ministry. Yeah. I know what I'm talking about. I know what I can. I know my anointing. There are people who carry an anointing when they stand, they will see demons. Me, I carry an anointing of dominion, of rulership. I sit on the seat of wisdom. So, when I say the things that I'm saying, don't try to use your mind to interpret them. The people that will run NGOs are being born in this church. The people that will lead this nation are in this church. The people that will govern this nation are in this place. The people that will be sought after by the world are in this church. You must understand, the house of wisdom raises Joseph. Egypt will not survive without Joseph. You must understand, the house of wisdom raises Daniel. Babylon cannot survive without Daniel. So I know that there is coming a time where what makes Zambia Zion will be coming from this house.
how I love the Holy Spirit. One of the revelations God gave me last year was just that word, go. Listen to what the Bible says. Far be it from me.
have been with it. You see, we have been learning traditions of men, not the way of God. Matthew 15, verse 8. We have wisdom of men, not the wisdom of God. Can we read this together? I told you I wanted to show you something about who God is. Last week I showed you from John that God is not just God, but he's our father. You remember that? Let's look at it. I need to wrap up with that direction. John, 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 John. Is someone receiving the word of the Lord? Tell somebody, I will live by the law of honor. By the way, if you are dating and you want to get married, you do not have time to investigate a person's life. Study if they live by the law of honor. We have been counseling for over 20 years. We are, what I've told you right now will save you pain. If you are marrying a girl whom no one can talk to, you are marrying a man whom no one can talk to, you will find what you marry. John, quickly, quickly, John chapter 20. John chapter 20 verse 17. John chapter 20 verse 17. Can we read this together? One, two, three, let's go. Jesus said, do not for go instead to my and tell them I am and to my and so we've established that, isn't it? God is our father and he's our God. Malachi chapter 1 verse 6. 
If he is a father, listen to what a son is supposed to carry. Malachi 1 verse 6. Can we read this together? One, two, three, let's go. A son honors his father and a servant his master. If I am, talk to me. If I am, talk to me. If I am, what's the question if I am a father? Where is, and hear me, that's the question God is asking us today as Barak Ministries. You call me God. You say I'm your father. Question is, where is the honor due me? Where is the honor due me? Let me show you another aspect of God. Because there are two aspects that ignite honor from God. First Timothy. Look at chapter 1 and verse 17. First Timothy chapter 1 and verse 17. I want you to follow me because I want you to know who God is. And because a lot of people have not known who God is, they carry dishonor when they go to God. They go to God with so much dishonor that he can't relate with them. There is a reason why there are only certain people you read of who walked with God. Verse 17. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 17. Can we read this together? One, two, three, let's go. Now to the immortal, invisible, the only be, be, be. Listen, the Bible says, if he is a king, there must be honor. There must be glory. And that's why you must understand the teaching about kingdom. And why we are even learning about honor. He says, now to the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Tell somebody, honor belongs to him. Tell somebody, honor belongs to him. Look at the same uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 15. 1 Timothy chapter 6. Verse 15. Can we read this together? One, two, three, let's go. Which God will bring about in his own? God, the what? Move for first team with CVA for your cover. God, the and only the king of and Lord of give me the next verse look at look at the depth of who he is who alone is and who lives in <laughs> whom no one has or can to him be to him be So, if you have no revelation of him as king, you will not have a revelation that he needs to be honored. You will treat God just the way you treat any other person. Don't forget the definition for honor. Honor is the ability to discern someone's difference. Then, you celebrate and reward them by honoring them. Honor is the ability to discern. Honor is the ability to discern. This person is not like me. He is God. He is my father. He is king. He is creator. Honor is the ability to discern. When you discern someone, then the Bible says, you are now supposed to honor them. The Bible says, to him be. 
Do you know the danger with this? Imagine God told the children of Israel in Malachi a very dangerous thing. Give me Malachi chapter 1 verse 11. I want you to see this. It came too strong. It's not even about offerings. Because imagine he says something. Let's start from verse 10 so that you see what he told the children of Israel. Look at me. Let me explain this. The children of Israel, God gave them a protocol to honor. He said in the book of Exodus, anywhere where I cause my name to be honored, there must be an altar there where you bring offering and sacrifice. That's what he told them. Because I am a great king. But they thought, you know, Aleph Pangasana. You don't say, Alela and Afpama offering, Pamasan. Listen to what God said. One, two, three, let's go. Oh, that one of you would shut the doors. You would shut the temple doors. So that it would not light useless fires on my altar. I am not pleased with you, says the Lord Almighty. And I will, I will accept no offering from your hands. You know, when you start teaching on the law of honor, oh, so, for in Dalama number. Because offering. Understand this. This is a culture in the kingdom. It's a culture. If you don't understand it, listen to what God says. God does not care about you not understanding it. He's telling you, keep your money because I'm not pleased with it. Don't bring it near me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You better understand this. The freedom of being the type of person that I am is that I can tell you the truth because I'm not expecting anything. My life does not depend on members. So I can teach you the truth the way it's supposed to be taught. Listen to this. That one of you would shut the temple doors. I know most pastors who don't want that. But us who live by the law of honor... Even if this happens, the honor we live by will produce for us. Tell somebody, that's where I'm going. Tell somebody, my business cannot fail. Tell somebody, my career cannot crash. Tell somebody, because I live by the law of honor. Look at the next verse. Can we read this together? One, two, three, let's go. My name will be great among the from the rising of the it says from the rising to the setting of the sun in every place incense and pure offerings will be brought to my name because my name will be great among the now I want you to hear this <laughs> God says, listen, you think this is about offering? Keep your offering, shut your temple. He says, everyone who understands honor will still come to me. And they will bring better offerings than the grudging ones, the ones that are not pure because you are corrupt. Yes. Please move with Gishe. Because Abantu Ababa corrupt. Offering is a letter of dishonor. Do you know that one of the major places where dishonor comes in is when it comes to offering? People, follow me. Umuntu kutaya, ashta pizza ya 150 wino wino. Teta pere 150 mucheche. Ngatafu mye 150 kututumoku wogozo. 150, Sunday offering, 150. Ala tutuma. One of my young boys came and said, Sir, I gave 50 kwacha today. <laughs> I said, my boy, you are growing. He gave 50 kwacha and it was a breakthrough. Tell somebody we are growing. <laughs> Tell somebody we are growing. Listen to what God says. My name will be great among the nations from the rising 
to the setting of the sun. In every place, in every place, incense and pure offering will be brought to my name because my name will be great among the nations. So do you see what God is saying? Don't think this is about money. He says, if you think this is about money, keep your money. That's what God is saying. My name will be praised. It will still be glorified. By people who will bring incense and pure offering. Pure offering to my name. Let's go to the next verse. Can we read this? Let's go to the next one, actually. 13. Verse 13. Let's read this. Together. One, two, three, let's go. And you say, what a burden. <laughs> and you sniff at it contemptuously. Says the Lord Almighty, when you bring injured, crippled, or diseased animals and offer them as sacrifices, should I accept them from your hands, says the Lord. When you come to church, why is our pillar change? But now we have a feeling station, of me and the man. Let's say that, must I accept your change? When, by then, you must understand the cow, they were sacrificing animals. So God will tell them, why do you bring diseased animals? Why do you bring lame animals? Why do you bring infinity of kweta manokuri ine? But you expect me to bless you. Look at the next verse. Can we read this together? One, two, three, let's go. Cursed is the cheat who has an acceptable male in his flock and vows to give it, but then sacrifice a blemished animal to the Lord. Listen to why he's saying what he's saying. For I am, says who? And my name. That's why I'm saying I pray you understand kingdom. Because when you approach God religiously, you know, it's funny how people say, you know, it's funny how people say, when you're in the shop buying clothes, when you come to God to give an offering, Prophetess, I love the way the church is silent today. There is a deep anointing. <laughs> Listen to me. When you are buying designer's shoe for 1000 when you take yourself out for a weekend, you spend thousands of money. When you go out for holiday, when you want to have fun, wear the latest, buy the latest phone, Lesatachenga doesn't come in. It is when you have to do things for the kingdom. Why do they ask for offerings? Why must we give? Why must every... Doesn't it surprise you that any time it has to do with honoring God, you get annoyed. With honoring yourself, you don't get annoyed. Samuel, 1 Samuel 2, verse 29. Let's conclude today with who are we honoring. Can we read this together? One, two, three, let's go. Church, the way you're acting today, you are really inspiring me. All of us, let's read. One, two, three, let's go. Why do you scorn my sacrifice and offering that I prescribed for my dwelling? Why do you honor your sons more?
God is asking us today, why do we honor our wives more? Why do we honor our husbands more? Why do we honor relatives more? Why do we honor children more? Why do we honor friends more? God says, listen, he says, why do you scorn my sacrifice and offering that I prescribed for my dwelling? Why do you honor your sons more than me? Now, listen, he's using sons there, he's talking to Eli. All of us here have got what we honor more than God. Some people is their marriage, some people is their career, some people it's money, some people is their business, some people it's their life. When you read the revelation, he says, they did not love their lives so as to shrink back. No, they did not love their lives in revelation. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives. Do you know some of us can't talk about Jesus because... Ah, we love our status. We love our lives. Look at what he asked there. Why do you honor your sons more than me? Now, I think the first two services have been very challenging. Tell somebody we are dealing with the hard part. Tell somebody we are dealing with the hard part. Tell somebody the nice and easy, the one you like, is coming. But let's deal with the hard part first. Tell somebody because dishonor must die. Tell somebody because dishonor must die. Listen, people of God, my heart is set to honor God. I will not lead a church that carries dishonor. I will not. I'd rather another person leads a church that carries dishonor than I lead a church that carries dishonor. There are things I know about God that when you carry dishonor as a people, you're going nowhere. When you carry dishonor as a people, you're going nowhere. But do you know that if we can all embrace honor, all of us. Do you know that this place is too small for the kingdom of God? Church, talk to me. If we all carry honor, listen to the heartbeat of God. He desires that no one should perish. Are you hearing that heart? People talk to me. Are you hearing that heart? He desires that. Do you know what it is to honor God? Is to take that desire of God and put it in your heart. Praise him. Please hear the word of the Lord. To honor God is to take that which is in the heart of God and put it in your heart. What beats in the heart of God begins to beat in your heart. What pains him begins to pain you. What hurts him begins to hurt you. What makes him weep over a generation, you begin to weep over a generation. Imagine we're living in a time where gays and lesbians can protest. And Zambia is called a Christian nation. And no one can open their mouth. No authority. In our time, in our face. Do you know what the children in the Bible did when a man carried dishonor in the camp? They went and killed him on the spot. Now, tell somebody, say, take it easy. Don't go and kill anyone. <laughs> tell somebody, take it easy. Tell somebody, we're just looking at the law of honor. K 
Can Goliath speak in the days of David? Goliath. The Bible says David came and David says, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine who dares defile the armies of the living God? Don't forget, Saul was there, the king was there, he was silent. The generals, the commanders were there, they were silent. When honor has not been revealed to you, you will see and you will be silent. David says, I cannot allow this dishonor. Lord, if I don't kill him, kill me. How can we have a nation called a Christian nation and there is dishonor and no one can challenge it? No one can rise up to say, how do you dare you defile God like that, defile his land like that? Tell somebody I'm learning about honor. Tell somebody I am learning about honor. Listen, people of God. Honor comes from the heart. Honor comes from? Talk to me. Honor comes from? Stand. We need to pray about our hearts. Put for me Matthew chapter 15 verse 8. Matthew 15 verse 8. God says if your heart is far from him, you are in dishonor. Being in honor is your heart being near God. Anytime you are in dishonor, you are far. Your heart is far from God. How do you know your heart is far from God? Anything God, you need inspiration. You need to be pushed. Anything God, people have to plead for you. Anything God. I was laughing with someone. She was telling me, say, I'm done now. And I laughed. <laughs> because she's not supposed to tell me that I'm done. She's supposed to say, sir, what must we do now? So she knows, she's the only one who knows what I'm talking about. I laughed. Why? Please hear what you're hearing, please. This is the law of honor call. When you are in the law of honor, your heart is near God. When you are in dishonor, your heart is far from God. Everything you have to be put because you are far. When you are in dishonor, they have to beg you to give. They have to beg you to serve. They have to beg you to work with God because you are far. They have to beg you, don't live in sin. Don't forget. Don't commit adultery. Don't lie. Because when you are in dishonor, you are far from God. But a person in honor, he's near God. That's why David says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, let them be pleasing to you. That's a cry of a man of honor. I don't want anything that will hurt you. I don't want anything that will be wrong. I, I, everything about me must honor you. Job says, my eyes will honor you. My legs will honor you. My money will honor you. My hands will honor you. My influence will honor you. Everything on Job's life was an honor to God. Pray after me, Heavenly Father. I have heard your word. Daddy, I have lived in dishonor for so long. And it has become no more. Help me today. Touch my heart. My Father, I refuse to be far from you. I refuse for people to beg me to be near you. Bring my heart near you. 
draw me close to you in honor. Let me honor you by praying. Let me honor you by reading the word. Let me honor you by serving your purpose. Let me honor you by witnessing. Let me honor you by seeking the kingdom first. Let me honor you by making disciples of all nations. Daddy, let me honor you with a heart that beats after you. Lift your right hand. Let me pray for you. Father, I bring this church before the throne of grace. Lord, I call upon the blood. I ask my Father, wash us clean from the law of dishonor. Daddy, every dishonor we have lived by and it has become natural and normal. Every dishonor we display, every dishonor we have grown up in now and matured in, uprooted by the blood. Let the personality of the blood enter into every man's life, every woman's life, and let it uproot dishonor. My father, it's a decision to make today to live a life of honor. Paul says, we desire to live honorably in every way. And that's our desire as Barak Ministries. We desire to live honorably, daddy, in every way. I pray for this church, daddy. I ask, give us the grace to honor you. I pray this in Jesus' name. And everybody say it, amen. You may take your sis, church. Let me have the tithers come in front. 10%.